Genesis 39 this morning. Genesis 39. Before we get into the lesson today, let's deal with our missionary letter, the lead betters uh, to Haiti, and uh, I believe they are stationed in Florida right now because of her health and, and uh, different things, he, and uh, so pray for them and uh, for her health, uh, pray for the church that is over there, and uh, they had um, a friend that was uh, uh, murdered. Uh, over there, a young young person, and uh, so uh, pray that uh, God would help in that situation uh, in the church. Uh, let's pray for the people of Haiti. And uh, you know, I, I think of what we've been hearing about Haitians in our in our news cycles and things. And uh, listen, I believe people ought to come here legally. I'm not going to get too much involved with that stuff. But God is bringing these people to us. I mean, they're coming right to our back door. We have a great opportunity to minister and pray. And if the Lord leads people here this way, we, we need to minister to them just like we would our neighbors and uh, give them the gospel and share Christ. Who knows? They might get saved and then go back to their country, and, uh, and God could use them. And uh, so we could look at it. It's an awful thing. Yes, they should not be here illegally. But we could also look as an opportunity uh, to, to lead people to the Lord and uh, see Christ do something in their life. And uh, so it seems like God is just bringing the mission field here. And uh, I'm not going to get too much because everybody has their opinion. But uh, the way I see it, God opens doors everywhere. And opportunities, if they come, let's take them. And uh, so let's make sure we're praying for the Ledbetters, that uh, God would continue to use them. Uh, he is continuing to, to serve down there, and, um, and uh, he works with uh, people in the, the highway patrol there in Florida. And so uh, let's pray that God would help them. Let's pray for Greg and Becca, as always, that uh, God would continually uh, help them and strengthen them. Uh, pray that God would continue to lead them in the, the way that they are going. And uh, Lord willing, I think next summer he's coming home on furlough, right? Or and uh, so uh, that will be a, a good time for him. And uh, so uh, let's make sure that we're praying for these things. And then um, I think in a couple of years he's thinking about he's starting a church and uh, um, in a northern town, I believe it is. Gisborne, that's right. And so um, let's, let's be in prayer for that and so all those things. Genesis 39, dealing with temptation, dealing with temptation. Uh, anybody in here that doesn't deal with temptation? <laughs> all right, nobody, nobody that doesn't. Okay, all right, so we're all in the same boat together, right? We all have temptation that we have to deal with, and it seems uh, we'll see in the Bible, it's every day that we have to deal with it. So how do we, how do we deal with the temptation that comes into our life? And, uh, and, and uh, get past it. You know, Christ on the cross has delivered us from the power of sin. Remember what he told the, the woman that was brought in, in adultery. He says, go and sin no more to her. Flee the devil or resist the devil and he will flee from you. We can resist the devil, not in our own strength, but in the strength of the Lord, the strength of the Holy Spirit. We do not have to give in to temptation into our, into our life. And, uh, but more than, more than likely, most of us this, this week have given in to some kind of temptation in our, in our life. Now, when we talk about temptation, automatically we go to the major sins, uh, the fornication, the sexual desires, and things like that. But there is the temptation to lose control. There's a temptation of having pride in your life. There's a temptation of saying the wrong thing and uh, having a bad attitude. All of these things are, are temptations that we face in our life. And uh, Joseph is going to give us a great picture on how to deal with temptation. Now remember, Joseph... In his life, in, in the, the biblical record of his life, uh, was not written anything bad about him. 
Is this on, brother? Nope, it's not. All right. All right. Is it on now? Good. Wonderful. Uh, so nothing was wrong uh, recorded in his life that he did wrong, but we know that he was a man just like we were a man, uh, uh, men and, and women, and, and uh, he was human just like we're human. And so he did things wrong, but God just chose not to uh, record any sin uh, in the Bible. Genesis chapter number 39, uh, we find that uh, Joseph is going to deal with not only other people, but with himself in this chapter. If we go back to chapter 37, you'll learn that he had to deal with other people there. Now he's going to have to get closer uh, to home and who he is inside. And remember, Joseph's life is not about Joseph, it's about God and what God was doing in his life. And so it wasn't about the outward uh, that made his life great. You could be the, the richest person in the world. Uh, you can have the most fame in the world. Everybody can love you, but if inside is not right with the Lord, none of it matters. The fame that Joseph had and the prosperity that Joseph had wasn't because he was someone. It was because of God who was working in his life. I don't think anybody, any of us would want to go through what Joseph went through to get to where God brought him. At Genesis chapter 37, we see that uh, Joseph was thrown in a pit. He was slow, uh, sold into slavery. Now he's going to have to deal with temptation in his life. What happens on the inside? Who we are is not what people see. Every one of us got up and we got ready and we come to a building where we're going to see other Christians and we all know how to behave in front of other Christians, don't we? So who we are is not what you see. It's not on the outside. We are who God knows us to be on the inside. Because nobody sees the thoughts that come across my mind. Nobody sees the desires that I have within myself. And nobody sees those things in you. I can't tell you what, I, what you're thinking right now. I can't, think, I can't tell you what you thought this week. But I know someone who does. The Lord is seeing always those things in our life that other people can't see. So you can dress up. And you can wear the right clothes, you can say the right things, you can read the right Bible. But it doesn't matter if inside you're not right with God. It doesn't matter. Genesis 38, you've noticed, hopefully if you've noticed already, we've skipped a chapter. We've gone from Genesis 37 to 39. Genesis chapter 38, Joseph isn't mentioned one time. But you find a man who was dealing with temptation. And in Genesis 38, you find somebody that came across temptation and he failed. And God's going to bring us to Genesis 39 this morning. It's somebody who crossed, him to, uh, who crossed temptation and he did it the right way. A lot of Christians are going to live in Genesis chapter 38. A lot of times we live in 38 when temptation comes, we, we fail and we give in to those temptations. Then we have to ask the Lord. The battle is living in Genesis chapter 39, doing it the right way. And the key to temptation is not Joseph. We all look at it and say, man, he made all the right decisions. Yep, he made all the right decisions. But the key was not Joseph. The key is the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice in verse number 2, the Bible says, And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Come down to verse Number six, and he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, speaking of Potiphar. 
and he knew not aught he had, save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well-favored. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, Lie with me. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master, what is not what is with me in the house? And he hath committed all that he hath to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I. Neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Here's a great truth the Lord wants us to learn. It doesn't matter what other people see. It matters only what the Lord sees. And our sin is ultimately against God and Him alone. May God help us this morning in our lives to be people that, with the Lord's help, overcome temptation in our life when we have to deal with it. Some of us might be dealing with it already today. Some of us might have been tempted to stay home, and you've already overcome that temptation. You're here. Some of you might meet that temptation later on today, maybe tomorrow morning when you wake up. But at some point in our life, we're going to have temptation, and it's there continually. We'll see this. Number one, notice the timing of temptation. The timing of temptation. Joseph had been in a pit, and now he's sold into slavery, and, and God has brought him to Potiphar's house. And Potiphar, being an officer of the Egyptians, uh, was a, a wealthy man and, and uh, of great stature, and and. Uh, we see that God is going to, with Joseph, take him from a bad experience and in that experience make it good. And listen, God is always in the business of making bad things into good things. The things that we think are horrible things, God uses those things for good in our life. Notice with me verse number 3. We've already read that the Lord was with Joseph. He was prosperous man this is all the things that the lord did in his life and his master saw that the lord was with him and that the lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand let me just stop and say this this should be our desire in our life that everything in our life that we do that the lord would make it prosperous speaking to people and and our job that, that God would give us favor there so God could be glorified in our life. Not preaching some prosperity gospel where you, you name it and you claim it. That's not what the Lord, but God can make things prosperous in our life and give favor. And that's what he did in Joseph's life here. Gave him great blessings after the situation that he was just in. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight and he served him. And he made him overseer over his house and all that he had put into his hand. At our jobs, it should be that we should be the very best worker that we could be for the employer. It should be that we pray, God, make me prosperous in this, in this business. Make this business prosperous because what it, because of me being here and what you're doing in, in my life. But notice the timing of temptation in our life. We found out that it always comes after the blessings come. Temptations always come after the Lord works in your life. Temptation comes when things are, are going well and, and, and it seems like the Lord is, is doing things in your life and you're growing closer to God and, and then bam, you wake up and there's temptation. Something in your path, something in your life that takes you two steps back. For Joseph, the temptation came after the moment that God was blessing him in his life. He was in a, in a place where he had left his family and been taken from his family and, and uh, now in, in a place where he knew no one and all he had was him and the Lord. 
some of the greatest struggles I've had in my life have been after the moments that I said, Lord, here it is, I'm giving this to you. Some of the hardest times is Monday morning when on Sunday God pricks your heart and you give those things to the Lord and you say, okay, God, I'm going to do this. I'm going to obey your word in this matter. And then Monday morning, the, 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 the direct thing that you said, God, I'm going to give this over to you is that temptation right there. Some of the hardest falls as Christians comes after the great victories. Some of the hardest times in our life is when we face the AIs after Jerusalem. And we fall. The Bible says this, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Listen, you might be in a place where you're thinking everything is great. The Lord is working in my life. I'm getting things from the word of God again. The Holy Spirit is speaking, and he has free reign in my life, and, and I'm just enjoying everything. Be careful. Temptation's coming. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, sinking whom he may devour. The devil is walking around, and he's waiting for that opportune time to stick his foot in and to trip you up. He's looking for that moment that he could take your life and sift you as wheat, as the Lord told Peter. He's looking for that moment in your life, men, that you're alone and everybody is out of the house, and you're sitting there with your phone. He's looking for that moment. I think sometimes that we don't realize the danger of sin in, in this world. Let me just stop and say this. Men, pornography will ruin your life. It will ruin your life. Hey, husband, that, that, that woman that's at work, that you're, you're tying yourself to emotionally, she's just fun to talk with, you better look at her feet, the Bible says. The Bible says her feet go down into hell. And before you know it, before you know it, your family's going to be ruined. Your children are going to hate you. Everything in your life is not going to be what it used to be. Because we think everything is great and nothing is going to happen. That's when temptation comes. And the devil knows. Knows it exactly. Oh, ladies, I'm not just going to hit the men here. I'm going to upset you too this morning, all right? Because pornography is rising with women as well. Oh, it's not visual pornography. It's in books that we read. It's in the trash that we read. Be careful. Just because it's in a book and you're reading it doesn't mean it's right. Be careful. Hey... Just because your husband isn't what he's supposed to be for you and meeting all the needs doesn't mean that you go find it somewhere else. We're all adults here, right? Let's be honest. Ladies, hey men, if you're not fulfilling their needs the way you're supposed to be fulfilling their needs, they're going to go look for it somewhere else. I'm not just talking about the, the sexual things. I'm talking about the emo emotional needs that they have. They'll look for it somewhere else. And you know who's waiting for those opportune times? The devil is. The devil is. Be careful. Temptation is in our life. Verse number 10. Not just happens after great blessings in our life, but it happens continually in our life. Notice what it says in verse 10. And it came to pass as she spake to Joseph day by day. 
every day Joseph was in his place where he was working and he was serving the Lord. And listen, guys, and uh, class, sorry, not just guys, but class, we got to deal with temptation every day in our life. It doesn't mean you, ref you, you, you stop your job. You have to deal with the temptation there. I remember growing up, and as a teenager, I was very foolish, and, and uh, I, uh, I, the Lord was working in my life, and there was things going on with, with my job, and so I went in, and I decided I was going to quit. I, was, I wasn't going to work there anymore because I thought if I removed myself from the place, the temptation would stop, and guess what? Temptation follows you everywhere you go. You just don't give in to it. This lady in Joseph's life, day after day, come lie with me. Come lie with me. Come lie with me. And it's a continual thing. Every day we have to get up and die to ourselves. Every day we have to say no. We have to resist the, the devil. Luke chapter 4, verse 13. Notice with Jesus Christ when Satan was tempting him. And, and uh, listen, you think that Jesus Christ never tempted, was, was never tempted? The Bible says he was tempted like we were. Yet without sin, he did it right. Because he's the Lord. He's the only one that could do it. Notice what the Bible says in Luke chapter 4, verse 13. And when the devil had ended all the temptation... He departed from him for a season, for a season. Listen, just because the devil isn't at your door today doesn't mean he's not going to be there tomorrow. Just because you overcame it today doesn't mean you, you don't have to overcome it tomorrow. It's day by day. Christians, we have to stop giving in to the temptation in our life. You can resist it with the Lord's help. Number two, notice our attitude towards temptation. Our attitude. How many of us would agree this morning that if God hates something, we should hate those things? How many would agree with that this morning? Now, how many of us live our lives that way? God hates pride. Go to the book of Proverbs and, and a couple of verses there. He gives seven things that God hates. That's an abomination to him. If God hates it, we should hate it as well, shouldn't we? We shouldn't toy around with things in our life. And a lot of times we, we fail in overcoming temptation in our life because our attitude towards sin is not what it should be. We think we can play around with things and it's not going to affect us. Listen, if you, you play around with fire long enough, you're going to get burned, right? You're going to get burned. If you play around with sin long enough, guess what? You're going to get burned. You're going to fall. If you're a, a drunkard, you don't put yourself in a place where people are going to offer you drinks. You just stay away from it. Notice our attitude toward temptation. Look at verse number 9. There is none greater in this house than I, neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? They, uh, excuse me, Joseph was able to overcome temptation in his life and, and dealing with it because he knew that his sin was not against Potiphar, but his sin was against the Lord. And most times we, we, we go into temptation and we sin and, and we give in to that temptation in our life because we forget that it's against God and Him alone. Psalm 51 and verse 4, the same wording is given to us with a man who gave in to temptation. A man after God's own heart. 
a man that God was going to use in a mighty way, gave in to temptation. Listen, you could be the most spiritual person in here. You can still fall to temptation. Notice what he says, Psalm 51, in his confession to the Lord. Against thee, the only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Christians, we got to get back to the place where we start hating the things that God hates. Start hating the sin in our life. Remember, it's that sin in our life that put Jesus on the cross. It's that sin in our life for, for why Jesus had to, to go and be beaten and his beard plucked out of his face and, and his, his back beaten and, and hanging on that tree and dying for us. It's sin. Now, we know if we sin in this life, it's not always just between us and the Lord, there are other people affected. But ultimately, our sin against, is against God. Joseph didn't look at her and say, listen, I can't do this because you're his wife and, and I would wrong him. He said, no, I can't do this because God. I'm going to hurt my fellowship with him, my relationship. We see in this passage that our integrity matters. Our integrity matters. Because every one of us at some point in this, this week is going to be alone. All of us at some point in our, our, our week are going to be faced with things in our life where we have to say, it matters more that I'm right with God than with anything else. It matters more that I don't sin against God in my life. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 3, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. The only thing, the only thing that I have in this life that somebody can't take away from me is my integrity. That matters or should matter before us and the Lord. Remember what I said at the beginning, it doesn't matter what you are on the outward, what people can see. You are who God knows you to be. Who are you when nobody else is around? Who are you when nobody else is listening to the thoughts there? Who are you sitting in, in the service and, and uh, something is happening that maybe you don't agree with and, and the thoughts come up in your mind? Are we going to do away with those thoughts? Who are we when, when we're at home alone? Because that's who God knows us to be. Everyone could be a great Christian here on Sundays. You could be the greatest Christian in the world on Sunday morning. You can come in, you can sing loud and, and uh, sing the songs. You can come in and greet people and smile at people. You can say all the right things. Guess what? You can get up and teach Sunday school and say all the right things. You can get up and preach. You can be a door greeter. You could be an usher and say all the right things on Sunday morning. But who are you on Monday morning? Who are you on Tuesday and Thursday and Friday? Who are you when nobody else is around? Joseph was in a place, and I don't know, we don't know, if she had cleared everybody else out of the house, if she had set this up to trap him. But Joseph was in a place where nobody else was around. He had every opportunity to lie with her. And he said, no, I can't because of God. Listen, the attitude that we have towards sin, it will help us overcome temptation in our life. Number three, number three, what is the response to temptation? 
Notice the response. Verse number 11, And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business, and there was none of the men of the house there with, uh, within, and she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. Listen, Joseph didn't play around with it. He didn't hold her hand. He didn't say, okay, let's just sit down. Let's talk about everything. Let's come up with a scheme about how we're going we're, we're to get through this. And, and uh, no, he said, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm running away. And listen, the greatest thing we can do in our life when temptation comes is go the other way. Run away. We overcome by running away. The Bible says in Romans chapter 13, verse 14, but put you on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Guess what? If you're having a hard time with your phone, they have software available that you can download on your phone and give it to your wife and she can see everything that you're doing. And guess what? It probably wouldn't be a bad thing to do preemptively anyways. And if you have a problem with that, then you're not right with the Lord. You're not submissive to him. Nobody's going to look at my phone. Well, then you have a rebellious attitude and a heart that needs to be dealt with. Why shouldn't your wonderful wife have, have all access to everything? Listen. Listen. My kids don't have a TV in their room for a reason. I know, that's, I know that's out of the norm nowadays. But I know in that room, when I'm sleeping, they can do anything they want to inside of that room. We got to be careful. Got to be careful. Well, you, listen, if there is have the safeguards that probably you as parents already have in place. Make sure you know what your kids are doing. Don't make provisions for the flesh in their life as well. Listen, if you're struggling with something in your life, don't put yourself in that position to keep struggling with it. Run away. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18, the first part of the verse, flee fornication. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 11, but thou, O man of God, flee these things. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22, flee also youthful lust. You think it's important the Lord's trying to get our attention? Run away from the temptation. Martin Luther said, you cannot keep birds from flying over your head but you can keep them from building a nest in your hair. Listen, you cannot get away from everything in your life and seclude yourself away in a mountain area somewhere. How are you going to lead people to the gospel that way? You can't quit job after job after job just to get away from temptation. It's not going to work. It's not the thing to do. Overcome. With God's help. Love this verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13. There hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. The key to Joseph's life was not what Joseph did with the temptation. It's who he ran to in the temptation. Because he didn't just run away from her. I believe Joseph ran closer to the Lord in this moment. You know how I know this? Look at verse number 21. After he was in prison, the Bible says, but the Lord was with Joseph. The Lord was with Joseph. And the blessings, God was with Joseph. In aftermath of everything, the Lord was with Joseph. And the key to it all in our life is the Lord. The place that we give the Lord helps us overcome temptation. There is no temptation taking you but such as is common to man. 
There is nothing in our lives today that somebody hasn't dealt with in this room already or is dealing with. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be all able to bear it. It's why we stress Bible memorization. I want you to think real quick the top three things that you deal with. All of us have besetting sins in our life. Real quick, think of the three things in your life that you deal with that you would say is a, big, a, a besetting sin right now. How many have those three things? All right. Thought of, how many have at least one already? Okay, good. The rest of you, ask the Lord to show you what that besetting sin is in your life. And then find a verse. You want to know how to overcome it? Find a verse that deals with that sin and memorize it. Because I guarantee you, at the moment the Lord tempts you, it comes to mind. You have a problem looking at things? 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, casting down imaginations and everything that, uh, that exalted itself uh, every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. You want to deal with your words? Deal with your words? Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Memorize verses that deal with the sin that we're tempted with. Because God will use that. The Holy Spirit will bring it to your mind in that moment. And when God's word floods your mind... You can say, okay, Lord, I'm not going that way. You have the choice to resist the devil. Joseph gives us a great opportunity on how to deal with temptation in our life. We could go through the Bible and we can see person after person that falls prey to temptation. Abraham, Isaac, Achan fell to temptation. Samson. Praise the Lord that we have examples on how to overcome it in our life. 